Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Tom. And this is The Park Bench. And we are today talking about a video that failed for the second time. They don't always work, do they? They don't. Uh, about once every six months or so, I hope. That's about the average. I go somewhere to film a video and it does not work. And you haven't seen anything about this video this time. No. Uh, this was a trip to Germany. Oh. I'm, I'm genuinely gutted that this one failed because I went to Germany for this. This is not like the, the Uppsala screen where I went for a couple of videos and this one mm. happened to work out as well. And I, got, I went to video, I, I went to Germany to film this and it didn't work, which is frustrating. So let's see where you were going first. Uh, yep. I, well, first of all, I, I mean, there, there was a minor perk. I did get to go there on the autobahn in one of the non-speed non limit areas, Ooh. which is, it's not fun. And it's not terrifying, and it's not anything, because literally every part of my brain was going, I need to check everything right now. And, but but I, I survived. It was, it was, it was good. And now I'm, I don't need to do that ever again. So that's fine. I don't know why I got my, I don't know why I got my bag up there. For some reason, I thought the video was in my bag. It's not. It's on my phone in my pocket. Yeah. Um, I went to what the hell airport did I go into? Can you name some German cities? It wasn't Hamburg. F. It wasn't Dusseldorf. Think Frankfurt? Frankfurt. That's where... Might have been. Might have been. <laughs> Done my research. Um, uh, wherever it was, it was near the tri-point between Germany, the Netherlands, and Belgium. And oh! I, and I got to stand in three countries at once. Top left of Germany, then? Yeah, no. Cologne. I flew into Cologne Bonn Airport. I was thinking Frankfurt's bottom left, isn't it? Yeah, you were nearly there. I flew into Cologne Bonn Airport, and then just round there is uh, is the Tri Point, which is lovely. Uh, it is not. Someone actually emailed me saying I should film a video about it. It's just where three countries meet. There isn't enough there. Um, but I was going there. To... <laughs> there isn't enough there. What do you want? More than three countries? Yes. There is one <laughs> point in the world I think where four countries meet, but it's not a place that's easy to get to. Yeah. Um, I'll fact check that if it was wrong. Comic Sans. Oh, I've been trying to get rid of Rainbow Comics. Anyway, I was there to film the world's largest artificial sun. Oh. Yes, right. Not only did this, like, first of all. This isn't the Vendelstrom, is it? I beg your pardon? I, I don't oh, know. Oh, that's that a is. nuclear thing. No. Have I got the name wrong? Probably. I have no idea Vendelstein? what that is. Vendelstein? <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean. The the Neckavestine nuclear power plant no, no, that we no, talked no, about no, in Citation. No, 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 no. Do you mean the disused one that's now a theme park? No, it's a new re research thing. Oh no, I wasn't. Okay. No, uh, there's going to be a lot of corrections to this video. So, <laughs> um, first of all, I want to make this really, really clear at the start because uh, uh, obviously the folks involved uh, may well see this video. This was entirely my screw up. Right? Okay. The folks there did a wonderful job. They took uh, time out of their day to, uh, for me and also a couple of photographers who were there at the same time to get some wonderful pictures. So it's, fortunately, they were shut down that day anyway. Um, they hadn't closed, especially for me. There were some photographers in as well. So it wasn't a complete write-off for everyone. But at the same time, like, I feel bad about this. They went out of the way to help. Mm -hmm. uh, and ultimately, this is turning up as a video here as I screwed up and not to uh, the massive audience saying this is a really cool thing. And like you said, it's a really cool thing. World's largest artificial sun. Yeah. Like three separate people emailed me saying make a video about this. So why does it exist? Um, it exists because, uh, and I'll, I'll play you the video in a minute because I got okay. through the edit and I'll tell you what, uh, what went wrong. It exists because... Uh, you need a huge testing facility for solar power stuff, for thermal power, uh, energy stuff, for oh. melting stuff and testing compounds. Uh, and yes, you could build it in the desert where there'll likely be sun, but even then you're going to need a massive thing of mirrors, the solar power's yeah. going to change with the seasons. This is reproducible, testable. And I said all that, and it looks amazing, and I will now play you... Oh, there we go. I will now play you the video and pause it when I need to comment. Uh, and feel free to pause it if you if you want to comment as well. It looks so good. These are 149. Oh, right, okay. So I have VLC set to automatically play at one and a half speed because I have a tiny attention span. <laughs> Let's try that again. These are 149 Xenon short arc spotlights. When all of them are switched on, they use 350,000 watts of power. 
If they're all pointed at the same 20 centimetre square, then they are 10,000 times brighter than looking up at the sun and they generate temperatures three times hotter than a blast furnace. Okay, so that's cool, yeah. right? Like those, those numbers are ridiculous. Um, obviously they're incomprehensible almost. Yeah. Um, and they're not all pointed the same way for this. We're only going to turn on a few. Um, but so far, so good. Like that was, a, that was a perfect take to camera. That was like take two. Um, I'm happy with this so far. All is going well. This is Synlight, part of the German Aerospace Center. And it's about to be switched on. This solar simulator is bigger than all other solar simulators all over the world put together. We use Synlight to develop new parts for solar thermal plants or also to do research on materials, on new type of metals, for example, or new type of ceramics, which uh, would resist very high temperatures. Sure, in theory, you can run these tests in sunnier parts of the world using arrays of moving mirrors like you see in solar power towers. But even there, the amount of light and heat from the sun will change depending on the time of day and on the weather. This is artificial, reproducible, and it works at the press of a button. This is a um, reactor which later on should produce hydrogen with the help of the immense heat. At the moment, uh, it is still empty and we are just testing its behavior, testing how good the materials are, how heat resistant they are, and also which temperature we can reach inside it. So I'm gonna place a GoPro camera, very much like this one, at the focal point. And the team here are gonna turn on Synlight just briefly. If this were a person, it would be instantly blinded and blistered and burnt, but hopefully it will survive just a few seconds of a low dose of Synlight, just long enough that we can see what it's like. Okay, so that's a good setup, right? Yeah. Everything up to this has gone really, really well. Not only that, I've got shots, and you'll see this as, as we go in, of the blast door closing. Because they have a conference room that looks out onto the whole array. Conference room? Yeah. yeah. But obviously when it's turned on, you have to close a physical blast door over this. There are interlocks, there are buttons, there are all sorts of lovely little things going on. Like this, I'm so happy with this. <laughs> can, can I... Am yeah. I able to easily guess what happens here? Take, take a guess, take a guess. Did the lights not come on? No, the lights came on. Oh. The lights came on, and the GoPro dealt with them. <laughs> the problem here is that this is a massive anticlimax. And again, this is my fault. They did it in person. It looks amazing. On their security monitors, it looks brilliant. But unfortunately, I should point out, as we set everything up and a literal blast door closes over the observation room, uh, that this is not going to look nearly as impressive as you think it is. That was added in post to try and deal with the fact that this isn't going to look nearly as impressive as you think it is. I recorded that in my, in, in my room, I think it was, in, in my flat, uh, and just kind, of, just kind of trying to cover the fact that it's not going to look good. We're only turning on a few lights and only for a few seconds. I would quite like my camera to survive. But remember, each of the lights that is turned on is more than 60 times brighter than looking up at the sun. The camera's gonna do its best to try and keep up. So that was, that was several, uh, several dozen, possibly several hundred times brighter than and hotter than the sun. And the GoPro just went, I'm good. We're good actually, for the GoPro, that. Oh yeah, what you're actually seeing there is a combination of two takes, because I looked at the first one and went, oh, that's, because oh, we, we just turned one on that to see. And we went back, we moved the camera a bit close to the focal point, we put a few on, and like, I, I looked at that afterwards, because the cool down effect is beautiful, right? I looked at that and went, oh, that'll, that, yeah, I think that'll look fine in the edit. That's fine, I can make that work. I could not make that work. Can I ask the one question that everyone else is thinking? Yeah. Why didn't you just overexpose it? That was overexposed. 
Here's, <laughs> here is what the actual shot looked like. The GoPro just went, yeah, I'm good with this. I'm just gonna, just gonna lose that bit of detail. I can still see the rest. And they did not want to put any more on because it might start melting the GoPro and we didn't have any setup for that, let alone risk assessment for melting lithium ion batteries oh, or yeah, anything yeah. like that. Because um, it will have already been really hot. It just happens to be very good at dealing with bright lights. So the only way I could have recovered that is to go back there and melt a GoPro. That's the only possible way that this comes out as a good video is if we turn on dozens of these lights for long enough to actually melt a GoPro. And there's no way in a shiny new facility that is not designed for melting GoPros, that is designed for doing proper research, they're gonna let something explode a lithium ion battery. And it's really frustrating because like all that setup was great. <laughs> As cool as that video is, and as cool as the story is, it's not, it's hey, not look enough. at this cool, is it? It's not. It didn't quite make the cut, and that is immensely frustrating. Uh, for me, making stuff, because I went over to Germany for this, for them, because, you know, they, they gave their time to do this, and ultimately I'm, I'm here saying that the video didn't work. The place worked. The place is amazing. It's bigger than any other facility. It's bigger than all the other facilities like it put together. Yes, I just dropped my phone on the floor. No, I'm not going to pick it up. I'm in the middle of a rant. Um, and it was entirely my fault for not doing the research and not thinking, if the GoPro just deals with this, how am I going to cope? Why on earth would you assume the GoPro would deal with that much light? Right. I just kind of assumed that after two or three, it had just completely overexposed and that we'd be able to get a couple of cool shots of like the light beam. You saw the, the shot on the security camera of that. Yeah. That it just, it wasn't enough. And I realised what was missing afterwards. I realised one, one of the things that might have saved it and which I can't bring myself to lie about to put in there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna replay that back with one extra thing. Lights don't make that noise. They only make that noise when someone turns on spotlights in Hollywood movies. When someone turns on the bat signal, there is a gudumph. Lights don't make that noise. That, that probably just made the sound of the click of a mouse. It, it literally, it's a click of a mouse and a tiny little dink of a xenon bulb switching on. <laughs> and that's it. It's, it's a combination of my expectations and my screw up and Hollywood expectations and it just didn't quite work. But there are some things you just can't predict. Yeah. You wouldn't predict that a GoPro could do that unless you'd shined it at a million torches yeah. in one go. And so, you haven't. yeah. So that was, that, that was, this is the first time I've had a failed video in a long, long while that has involved interviewing someone else. That has mm. involved, like, going out to a facility and, and all that. So I am, I, I apologise uh, great to them. At least the video some, still somehow got out to people. At least you've been able to show it. At least I've been able to show it, even with all these caveats. Uh, and we'll put links in the description below so you can find out more about them and their project. Yes. I've got to drive in the Autobahn. <laughs> Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Tom. And this is The Park Bench. And I'm rubbing my hands together for <laughs> some reason. I don't know, you kind of started without me. Not me being ready there, so I'm just kind of in the middle of hand rub there. Let's, let's have some hand <laughs> rubbing noise. <laughs> I just wish for some cotton pickles. <laughs> <laughs>